All right, uh, welcome day two. If you are joining on Facebook, give me a thumbs up in, in the comment to make sure the sound is good. Meanwhile, I'm going to start uh, the Clubhouse broadcast. All right, we're live on Clubhouse as well. take another minute to get started once again if you're watching this on Facebook give me a quick thumbs up Zoom link is posted in the comments or you can find it in the group in case you want to join us uh, on Zoom and be able to ask questions in real time. Camera is not working today. Weird. All right. Um, we're going to start. And today we're going to talk about mission. Okay, so following the SMASK format. Yesterday was situation, today is a mission, and you'll understand why I think this is important to learn on day two. So once again, why am I doing this? Um, number one is for a few years I was feeling like I need to give back to the community uh, and just something innate that I experienced and I just had to do something about it like it's hard to explain but some people call it call for contribution um, I also know that transition is a problem and uh, you know witnessed too many people struggling firsthand and even you know we are running Facebook ads to this challenge and those comments I read this morning about um, transition being a problem especially for regular force and how like you're left all alone and it's up to you to figure things out and I don't necessarily agree with it so I responded that um, you're not alone there are many people who want to help there are many organizations who provide resources there is mentorship and other things available so we are trying to be part of the solution to that problem right now and like i said yesterday a lot of working with veteran entrepreneurs so later this week there's going to be um, i'm going to talk a little bit about an opportunity to work closer uh, with me and uh, more to follow on that so what i want to cover today is uh, first i'm going to 
I guess explain why mission is critical and important and give you a little bit of a warning about what happens when uh, you choose to proceed without a mission and then I'm going to talk you through the five W's of a mission the who what where when and why and we're going to go through steps that will help you develop your mission and purpose define your target audience and generate ideas for your actual products or services and then um, how to select the appropriate business model okay um, so the hustle um, if you were watching yesterday you would uh, see this uh, slide where you know I talk about how in 2007 I was you know working in a civvy job where I was still serving in the military very actively um, I was doing a couple of other things to try to get ahead in life and we were um, about to have our first child and figured that it's expensive to you know afford a child in Toronto at the time and I needed a side hustle and you probably hear the term side hustle a lot from you know other people like you know Gary V and whatnot and there's nothing wrong with that term per se but anyways what happened I found a bunch of people who were making money online and uh, kind of followed what they're doing and pretty much copied what they were doing um, I had some skills that I brought to the table I had to learn a couple of new skills put the two together and got my first paid lead and boom I was in um, business all of a sudden but you know this is what happened <laughs> if you take a step back um, there's a famous uh, business consultant and marketing guru called uh, Jay Abraham and I recommend his podcast and his, his books and anyways he has a phrase that um, basically goes like this 90% of entrepreneurs are tactical and not strategic and I guess you know coming from the military especially like from the NCO core like we're mostly tacticians and let the officers be more uh, strategic whereas now like as I am I have, I've become a warrant officer and now studying to become a master warrant officer I actually had exposure to the way uh, how senior officers think and plan operations so um, here's the deal like if you're just being tactical right and you just want to make some money you want to side hustle typically what I see happens is um, you see somebody making money doing something you want the same kind of result for yourself then you basically try to copy what works and very often you don't really add any new value to uh, to the market you probably experience some struggle maybe even get some short-term success and uh, eventually you will plateau or fail completely and basically you have to repeat the cycle and I say it time and time again and uh, many uh, people that I know and including myself like there's been a lot of um, you know different things that I have tested over the last 10 plus years of being in business and essentially um, they kind of follow the, this cycle so you see something that is gaining popularity you try to jump on the bandwagon you um, try to emulate others and you experience some success but then eventually it slows down and potentially you can even stop completely so can you make money hustling like that of course you can you know with enough hard work determination and grit that we all possess for sure and I did make money from that as you remember how I started is pretty much kind of copying others who had uh, some success but the question is is it really the best way or is it the best way for you and that depends on what you really want um, you know here's the thing like do you want me to show you like just a quick way to make 30 bucks a day barely doing anything here's a screenshot I made this morning uh, this is from yesterday uh, 15 November and you know this this little side 
hustle of mine in my, one of my little businesses actually made 30 bucks US uh, with I I did nothing so who here wants me to completely throw away the rest of the slides that I prepared and just show you this little uh, tactic that will allow you to make 30 bucks a day and you know 30 bucks a day is a thousand bucks a month and you know I remember um, I was on my infantry warrant officers course and it was fairly demanding and you know we're we're in the back of the truck and there's this regular force sergeant with me and this is like you know day four we're wet tired cold hungry haven't slept and he's like you know 500 bucks 500 bucks i'm like what do you mean he's like i'm doing this for 500 bucks a month and that was the difference between a sergeant's pay that he was receiving and the warrant officer's pay so that was the reason why he agreed to go through this you know hard difficult course is basically he explained to himself it's to get an extra 500 bucks a month so like i can show you a way how i can make a thousand bucks a month without all of that suffer but do you really want it like is that the kind of business that you want or not like that's something you have to decide for yourself if you just want to make a couple of grand on the side like fairly easily you can and i can probably go and show you some some quick tactics and tricks that can get you there but is that something that you do want to build is that the legacy you want to live you know that's the question you gotta ask yourself so you know i haven't heard otherwise but it seems like you guys want me to proceed and actually teach you the rest of the things that i have prepared and not get distracted with the shining objects like this does that sound cool if yes then let's go all right so what is the right way um in my opinion and again this comes from you know years of being on the hustle wheel like i just explained um i really recommend this start with why and you know how the mission is who what where when and why i believe why is actually first there's this book called start with why by simon sinek and um you can watch his uh, famous U youtube uh, ted talk that if you don't want to read the book you just watch it in a few minutes so um why if you have a strong why like why you're in business the why will keep you going when the going gets hard and it will uh, eventually i mean if your why is to make a couple thousand dollars extra for your family so that you can you know add an extra bedroom to your home or like have a second vehicle or put your kid through school that's a pretty strong why initially right like it will probably keep you going initially but you know um once you reach that level and like i showed you like you make an extra 30 bucks a day 60 bucks a day and you reach that you know initial safety goal and now what and then you will need a new why like because the the old one is fulfilled and now you have that extra financial security and stability and it's not you're either going to get stuck at that level and plateau and don't move anywhere or you're going to need a new stronger why uh, another reason is why will attract the right kind of people to your team and that's something i just realized recently is that like the why of you know getting a couple of extra bucks in greg's pocket is not typically a strong enough why for people on the team to actually take action like they want especially right now it is talk about millennials and whatnot they want to be part of something they want to solve problems they want a real purpose and mission to get behind and rally behind and this is your why and again according to simon the the customers the clients they will sense the why in in your actions and your marketing and everything and typically companies that have a strong why that also resonates with people will sell more like you know think about apple they we think different that was their like one of the early campaigns and a lot of people got behind that why and look where apple is now one of the most valuable companies in the world all right so um really recommend this book but if not find find the uh, the talk 
and um, you'll understand exactly what I mean. So um, there was some homework yesterday where I kind of gave you some questions to ponder about your capabilities and passions and this and that. Uh, and that's really designed to help you narrow this down. And, you know, it, it, I think the word is in Japanese, it's called Ikigai. And I hope I pronounce it correctly. And, you know, it's not like I'm going into some like voodoo guru touchy-feely stuff like you know put on my lululemon pants and meditate even though actually true story wearing uh, lululemon pants right now i have a nice military discount <laughs> here in canada uh anyways um it's it's really like a venn diagram on steroids where you can actually going through this exercise you can determine the type of business you want to build the type of product or service you want to build the type of people you want to serve and what are you going to get out of it so i really recommend actually sitting down and spending some time and going through it instead of just charging for it and say yeah i just need to make a couple of bucks on the side wish you can i'm not going to get me wrong but i think this is the right way to do it this is the long game that you want to play that will set you up for success in the long term all right so um and by the way, notice how there's some comments here about the feelings that you experience if you kind of don't get this right. This is the caveat. So like you may end up making money down the road in a few years, but maybe you'll you'll be here. Why? Because you, you didn't do this thoroughly and you ended up in this quadrant where you're just doing something that you're good at, but you feel useful, useless. So yeah, that's why I think it is important to do this early on. Um, so after you determine your why, the next thing is the who. And this is also important. Like a lot of people just kind of, especially if you copy business models, you just kind of go into it without any thought. So you start like typically with a product, the, but that's, or the service that you want to do, but that's not the best way. Also, the best way is to figure out the who, the audience, the customer avatar the clients that you want to serve and here's why because you know business is simply solving problems for other people that's all there is to it if you boil it down and like Elon Musk said that you get paid in direct proportion to the difficulty of the problems that you solve right uh, one of the richest people in the world said that so if you decide first who you're going to solve problems for that will take care of a lot of other questions as to you know which business should I start what should I sell if you can figure out who you're going to solve problems for who is your customer avatar who is your ideal client that's going to take care of many questions down the road and another thing that is important when you are picking your who is they say uh, riches riches are in the niches uh, which really means that you can't be everything to everyone and just say, yeah, I want to help all the people in the world. It's, you got to be specific, especially like I said yesterday, the barriers to entry are low. The competition is getting higher. So you need to really differentiate yourself. And one of the ways you can do it is by what's called niching down. And here's a quick example. So typically, um, I want to start a couple's travel blog. And that's actually you know, pretty specific. Like usually it's like, I want to be a blogger. Or like I want to be a travel blogger so this is already like getting a little bit more specific not not just any travel not just any blogger not just travel blogger but a couple's blogger but still according to this infographic that I found it's still considered a red ocean market which means it's competitive and a ton of competition it's still fairly broad and you will have a hard time carving yourself a piece of that pie whereas if you niche down a couple of levels deeper and become more specific like a blog for young couples focused on budget friendly honeymoons in southeast asia like that's super specific we'll have little competition and you have your own piece of the pie there now i got some people trying to join join the group right now i'm gonna let, let them in just a moment uh, all right. 
by the way uh, we are almost at 100 people in the group if you guys uh, help me help each other <laughs> invite more people it's still not too late all the replays are going to be up on the group let's get over 100 right so anyways back to to the who so this this example of a uh, picking a niche is very specific and if you pick a niche correctly right once you figure out who are you going to be serving it's going to make things easier because you're going to know exactly what kind of problems they face you will learn to speak their language you can become the number one go-to person that niche and you really won't have to sell because you will be able to exercise empathy empathy and um, use techniques like feel felt found which means like you can really say you know i know how you feel because i felt the same way or i know people who same felt the same way and then i found a solution here it is the only caveat is that you got to make sure that the total addressable market size is meaningful enough so no underwater basket weaving so in this example if you know if there's only three couples in in the world that are young and have a small budget and they want a honeymoon in southeast asia then your total addressable market is minuscule but i believe that in the world there's quite a few young couples who get married and want to go into bali on a honeymoon or uh, maldives or something all right so basically yeah um like if you know who you're going to be serving all of these benefits are gonna come out at you and like you know speaking the language of the audience is very important like the reason why you are in this group because you're veterans and so am I and we speak the same language and we communicate uh, in similar ways and we can understand all the acronyms and little little jokes and uh, slang that we use and only we understand so it's 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 huge right because then people can relate so once you decide your why and the who, then and only then you should go into the what. And this is again from Simon Sinek's um, book. The why is at the center and then how and what is on the outskirts. So the good thing about picking the who first is that then your audience will often tell you what they need the most. And like we've done this by using quizzes and polls and just literally like asking what next product do you want from our customers like it's super powerful um you know you can read reviews and comments on uh, your competitor products and services and see what people like and don't like so there's a ton of things you can do and just listen to your customer essentially and another thing that is important is uh, you got to offer something that people want to buy so often a mistake is made where uh, people create products or services that they want to buy but not necessarily the audience that they serve and then they waste all this time creating this product or service or whatever and go out and nobody wants it <laughs> and how do you make sure that it's something that they want like the product or service has to solve a specific problem it um, can be your own problems you solve for yourself or it could be a specific problem that you know exists in the marketplace and there's examples like you know the the guy who invented the wetsuit he had a problem he was a surfer it was uh, fairly cold where he lived and he wanted to surf longer during uh, you know the winter months so he ended up creating a wetsuit and now everybody uses it uh, the, the guy who invented the GoPro also a surfer wanted to s film himself uh, during surfing and he basically needed a durable waterproof ca shockproof camera that wouldn't get smashed through the through the waves and rocks and stuff and he locked himself in a room for i think six months and basically put together the first gopro prototype as a solution to his own problem oh look another person wants to join the group this is awesome all right uh, so you got to know the problems specific problems that um, your product can solve another thing is um, 
people will pay a lot more for the cure than for a prevention. It's it's prevalent in the pharmaceutical world. Like you know, people do buy vitamins and supplements, but a lot more money is made in the the drugs that actually are treating diseases. So just look at any pharmaceutical company profit and loss statement and you will see exactly that you know this they, they do sell a good number of prevention offers but they make a lot more money selling the cure and this is another mistake that I see made a lot is that um, people come up with a product a service that is a prevention from something that has not happened so it's not as powerful like you can still sell it like you know insurance has been sold and you know sunblock and and all that it's but there's it's a lot easier to promote something that is a cure to an existing pain and specificity will always be generality right so if, if you're again trying to be everything to to everyone it's um, not as powerful as you know being a specific solution to a specific problem so you know if, if you have a leaking pipe in the middle of the night in your house you will want a specialist you will want a you know specialist plumber emergency plumber who knows how to deal with that problem you don't want like a general handy handyman even though he may be able to fix it you will call a plumber not a handyman at 3 a.m so how can you become that specialist in the niche in the audience that you decide for yourself like that is that is your main main job um, and another thing with the what is you need to learn how to make offers so good people feel stupid for saying no and um, one of the homework assignments in the group uh, the, the um, one of the members said that he's struggling with sales well if you create an offer that is irresistible, truly irresistible, and solves a specific problem and ticks all of the boxes above, then people really feel stupid for saying no, and you don't have to sell. They just they just come to you and get it, right? And because it's so good, they're going to talk about it and refer more people. So you don't have to really sell uh, if you have a good offer. And I really recommend this book. Um, just um, it's just 99 cents on Kindle. I mean, if you want to get a physical one, no problem. But uh, it's actually a friend of mine. Uh, I met him a couple of times at a conference. You know, guy that um, was a gym owner. Then you know, he opened a few more gyms, slept on the floors, like worked his ass off to fill his gyms with people and then figured out that he was good at it and then started teaching other gym members sorry gym owners how to fill their gyms and eventually he built a huge consulting practice which is a nine-figure company and he wrote this book just earlier this year and I think so far it's the best book that talks about specifically how to create kick-ass offers that sell themselves so highly recommend it and the reason why it's important you know even though I promised this is gonna be like digital marketing online marketing oriented but what I discovered is that a great offer with poor marketing will always outsell a great marketing with a poor offer so you can't really put lipstick on a pig you can to a certain extent but it's it's so easy when you have a good product a good offer that people just naturally want like I know where to lie it literally sells itself like I saw this guy that you know we were working on, on bringing in as a client uh, for Google Ads services didn't happen but essentially he invented a type of a toy and um, is kind of unique and he put together a website that looked worse than the website that I was making in 1997 <laughs> honestly it's like the worst looking website ever some photos he took with his phone very low quality phone like a very basic video you shot on his iPhone using that as a Facebook ad and then he sold four hundred and fifty thousand dollars US worth of the product in his first year whereas the worst website 
the unprofessional ads and everything. He he got everything wrong, really. The only thing he got right was the product, and of course the the audience, the kids, that uh, that were his who, and he was still able to beat all the other uh, you know people with very slick marketing, but not as good of a product. All right. So the last two W's of, of the mission statement typically are where and when. So this is more for um, something that I observed personally when people kind of came to me in, in real life and said, well, you know, I'm curious about what you do, teach me, can you show me? And I would really show them my playbook and when it came to spending their first dollar or taking some action, that's where most of them would stop and not do anything. So um, I've, I've seen people basically never take any action. And this is why if you set up a smart goal, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound, you give yourself a deadline, this will make sure that you execute, 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 and get it done. Because most businesses fail in your head. Like they don't even start. Like you basically talk yourself out of it, or you get uh, your your friends and family talk you talk you out of it, and basically it never happens. So give yourself a deadline and start executing against that deadline. Like the last thing that I want is people come into the group, spend five days watching all the content, say thanks, this was useful, and then go on with their day. And this becomes nothing but again with J Abraham. Whom I mentioned earlier calls intellectual entertainment, or um, another influencer that I know he calls it uh, mental masturbation. P pick your favorite uh, term, but essentially, it's if you don't do anything with this information, if you don't start executing, then it's uh, it's going to make me sad. But we're going to move forward and since we mentioned goals I want you to go through a little goal setting exercise and you know you can do it as we go along or this is gonna be part of the homework but you gotta you know once you you kind of decide on the direction you want to go you need to really let your imagination uh, pour out on, on paper and in three years just give yourself permission to to dream and say like what kind of income do you want one exactly do you want it and why why that amount and why on that day like think about it. and then even though this is technically a business course but business is supposed to fuel our life we should work to live not live to work so your personal life, like what are your health goals for the next three years, your wealth goals and your relationships, the big three. How do you see yourself in those three areas? I really invite you to take uh, some time to go through this because this will also help you define all of the other things with your business and your mission. So um, the, the last part of today that I promised I'm going to go over is uh, some suggestions how to select the business model so we mentioned yesterday the three that I have experience with are affiliate marketing marketing agency or e-commerce and could be other it could be that you have a cattle range or a med spa and you just want to scale it using you know, online uh, strategies and tactics that's fine um, that's okay too um, you can totally apply these concepts to grow your other type of business but if you're just starting and you're not sure which to select like here are some of the factors that you you want to consider um, think about the type of company you want to build and like is location independence important or do you want an office with a team uh, do you speaking of the team do you like working in a team or do you prefer working solo and that's also going to dictate the type of business that you, you can build you know, big agency versus like a small uh, one-person consultancy 
what size business do you want uh, in terms of uh, size um, of revenue this is going to be a six seven eight nine figure company how many people like all of that um, is important and then I really invite you to finish your day one homework and figure out what are you good at and what do you like and what you're not good at and what you don't like and that will determine also what kind of business you can go into or what kind of things you need to outsource hire bring in other talent partner up etc like if you don't have um, a skill you either need to acquire the skill or get somebody with that skill and speaking of that like what skills must you acquire and that you want to acquire and who you must become and by who you must become it's also uh, an important point because you need to evolve and if you want to be in business and you want to be an entrepreneur then you gotta have these three things in my opinion you gotta remember your why you gotta be obsessed over your who and you gotta be the master of your what so master of your craft so like just like when you were in the military we supposed to be the best at what we do and you always train you always prepare and you always try to become better and that's exactly the same it's a constant state of learning you never stop improving so like I constantly uh, read new books I mentioned a couple of books today and I'm gonna definitely mention more as we go along and um, uh, I listen to podcasts and audiobooks instead of music when I'm driving or when I'm working out and uh, you know always trying to learn always trying to find new information to keep myself current and you need to be obsessed over your who over your customer because you know it's it's what's gonna set you apart from the competition and that's what's going to keep you going like you know uh, the website for this challenge was not ready uh, on time so I got up uh, early on Saturday and basically rolled up my sleeves and did the landing page by myself in three hours why because like I was obsessed over helping you know fellow veterans succeed and this was my why and my who because I would do anything for you guys and this is what it takes and if you kind of don't care about your market or you forget about why you even started you maybe will sleep in on that Saturday and not do the thing that needs to be done and that's not going to get you ahead so uh, that is all that I wanted to talk about for today um, so fairly fast and furious but I prepared a more thorough homework assignment that will help you answer some of those questions that I raised today about your mission your five W's and I will post this homework in the group immediately after the session and as always uh, you can ask questions when you watch the replay the replays will stay up in the group indefinitely feel free to reach out with any questions and uh, please please do the homework it will help you uh, also please share the video uh, the group with more vets we need more people in the group because if you like it if you think it's valuable if it's going to help other people please uh, share it so um with that day two live is over and we'll see you tomorrow same time 1300 eastern